It's truly an honor to be here to talk to you today about people and values. Because I follow on from Umberto, but now I'm going to talk to you about philosophy and ethics over the time that I'm here with you. Let's hope my presentation pops up. Yes, that's it. That's the title. The human uh, dimension to intelligent environments. The good news is that we're irreplaceable, it would seem, for the moment. And what's more, everything that's decisive in the future is going to be more related to humanity than technology. I think we can all agree on that. However, and although it may seem contradictory, we are not the protagonists of the moment, i.e. People aren't priority, the priority as we stand today. We're irreplaceable, but we're not currently the priority. And it's now time, and it's urgent to do so, to think about what we mean by human. It's quite confusing at the moment, the image that exists regarding human beings, human nature, and we need to rethink everything related to human. We need to reflect upon this because the line that separates artificial from natural is very fuzzy. We need to think about what makes us unique, what makes us different, not just what makes us different from other living beings, but from artifacts, from machines, robots, what we call AI. And this uh, reflection on human nature, there are lots of theories uh, surrounding this I'm not going to talk about today, but quite obvious we are animal, we are human, rational, a spiritual being. But what makes us different is that if we talk about development as people, we need the appropriate environment. We need a home. Um, we need some kind of care and love. And part of that is education. That's what makes us different from animals. And maybe we should talk about humanism as a new concept, humanism that concentrates our, on our need, our skill to interact with machines, technology, with this new artificial intelligence. If there are things that make us different, and we've spoken about that this morning, Jorge spoke about it, he spoke about many human skills and emotions, but I'd also like to highlight something that I think is very important. This term, I found the term in English because it's or Tegan Gedset, our great uh, thinker, uh, talks about. He talks about our ability to be self-absorbed. That is, we can turn our backs on the world and we can just become self-absorbed and look at our internal world. It's incredible. We have an internal world. That's where all these other skills, the other amazing and irreplaceable skills uh, emerge from, such as the human creativity and the ability to have critical thinking, the ability for critical thought today. I wanted to bring to you today, because we talk about revolution and the enlightenment and the new renaissance of humanism. I wanted to refer back to this beautiful oration called the Oration on the Dignity of Man. It dates from the 15th century. It talks about the dignity of man. I just got just a little bit from it. But these are 900 theses that try to prove the importance of the human intellect. It's a fantastic text. And here what he says is that we are free, that we humans are free and that's what makes us human, one of our essential features of human nature. And that means that we are able to do the, the best and the worst of things. What it says is here that you can degenerate and become like animals, or you can improve and become almost divine. We just need to think of history to realize that we, as human beings, are capable of atrocities against other people or to prevent them as well. We need to be brave if we want change in society. Human life, this essential characteristic of freedom makes us accountable, responsible. We're going to talk about our own responsibility. We are responsible for our own actions and decisions. All of our actions and decisions have consequences that makes us responsible for what we do. People 
uh, talk about how different it is to dis differentiate between reality and fiction. And that brings us to the myth of Prometheus that spoke about the fire of God, challenging the fire of God to get near a divine, near a divinity. It's like what Mary Shelley spoke about when she wrote about Frankenstein, this ability that we as people have to intervene, make us as people more responsible, more accountable. It means that we need to think not just about technological development, but also the consequences derived from that development. So there are many writers today about the homo deus, this power, this virtual unlimited power that humans have. And that's also a contradiction because there are also threats that come from this power that we have over ourselves. And just to talk of three threats. First is the vulnerability of nature. I hardly think I need to explain that the way we live is a provocation for our planet. We're just teaching, talk, using the planet as a resource. And then secondly, the questionable goals of technological progress, progress in general. This is a question of where we're going, where we're heading. Sometimes what we're doing is leaving behind what's important in this uh, progress. And then the threat against ourselves, against us as people, people who are just being treated as resources. And the only thing that you cannot instrumentalize are humans, because we have a, a value in our own right. And although this is not necessarily binding, and even though these are just uh, declarations of good intentions, which says that when people say that we need to legislate, there are initiatives that are thinking about how to put limits to uh, technological progress, such as the first draft for principal ethics that was presented by the European Parliament December 2018, December last year. I just want to talk about two of these 23 Asiloma principles that talk about human values and say that human values need to be considered when designing AI. And we need to make sure they're compatible with our, the ideals of human dignity, rights, freedoms, and cultural diversity. And they need to focus on the common good, i.e. superintelligence should only be developed for the service of widely shared ethical ideals for the common good, not for other aims. The thing is, in this smart world, this intelligent world that's progressing so quickly, there are still uh, major questions that mankind uh, is asking, and they're still valid. The, the concern about the truth, or what makes us truly humans, our freedom, our dignity, our basic human rights, and this ability that we should not lose. It's now the time, now's the time to ask ourselves questions. Ask ourselves the question, why are we here? Where are we heading? Where do we want to go? What's our ultimate aim? We need to be asking ourselves that continually. Another question that is related to this idea of values is why? Why do we need to uh, provide values education in the 21st century it would seem Values sound sometimes a bit old hat, old fashioned. But why? This is something that we're analyzing now. Firstly, because there's a general loss of values. Even the word value isn't, has lost its value. There's a lack of trust. Earlier, Jorge spoke about the need for trust, but there's a lack of trust. The Edelman Barometer, which publishes its results every year on the trust that humans have in institutions, is going down. It's dropping. Even when they're asked about the future, we're really not very optimistic about the future. There's a great deal of individualism. I think earlier somebody spoke about that. We're an individualist society because we don't trust. And that means that we cannot identify, we cannot get on board some kind of a common societal project. And then there's increasing dehumanization. I'm going to define what I mean by dehumanization. It's that which removes what makes us human beings. And faced with that situation, we can either run away. That's one of the options. That's one of our options, truly. Just turn your cheek and decide that's got nothing to do with you, or we can do something that was said here about a year ago. We can get 
working, anticipate and build the future that we want. A future that is more sustainable, fairer and more human for everybody. And that's the attitude that we need to work on and that is being worked on now in VET in the Basque Country. Because our vision is optimistic, it's not pessimistic. The, our, our vision is to transform, to want to change a society. It's a very optimistic, hopeful one because this opportunity is within our hands, this opportunity to change things. When we talk about changing things, sometimes people say, well, what is it that needs changing? Well, if I say there are problems in the world, nobody would be surprised at that statement. You don't need to be very attentive. Just look at the news forecasts. Problems of social justice, problems of climate change. They're all related to the way we live. We talk about progress in this situation, but maybe we're living at a time in which that's the way that we are. We've just got used to it. Everything just seemed to be data to us, which we're worried or not about. And, and yet, we, it seems we can coexist with all these data, these horrible images. But this sentence says is the ultimate uh, sentence. The ultimate tragedy is not the oppression and cruelty by the bad people, but the silence of that by the good people. A quote from Martin Luther King. Recently, I saw this tweet. It was fantastic. It was incredible. A gentleman who, well, the signatures were being collected in change.org to change the final of Game of Thrones. And this gentleman said, the fact that there are thousands of people getting moving to try to change fiction instead of reality is a great description of what the 21st century society is like. Is like. So can we talk about progress, really? Because progress sounds nice. I don't know if values sound nice, but progress sounds nice. We're progressing in technology, in the economy. But sometimes we leave behind what's important, which is people. People are just being treated like resources. I think you can understand this image just looking at it. I hardly need to explain. Progress isn't for everybody. This is a great future a photo, this selfie. But it's not for everybody. You're right. There's in, there's this technological divide. We do progress, and it's good for health. But we don't reach everybody. There's still inequality, and it's within our hands to deal with it. This, the sustainable development goals that we all know, are inviting us and are calling us, pleading us, governments and each and every one of us and institutions and private companies to take an active role and in this change, in this transformation. This is the best photograph that defines and describes what our problems are. Poverty, climate change, but it also sets out the solution. We are focusing now on the solution and solution requires education. Education is a the most efficient tool for social change social transformation. The uh, development goal number four, or the SDG number four, says that by the year 2020 we mean, need to get, sorry, 2030s needs to ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace and non-violence. So it's important to educate in values. And education offers us the possibility of changing course. So let's take this opportunity. Let's seize it. Let's take the bull by the horns. Values 4.0. We talk about values. Let's think about the values of our society, of our environment, and what values we should educate people in. When we talk about values, I'm sure each and every person here in this room has a slightly different idea of what values actually mean. But we put values 4.0 there, not because it looks nice, but because values actually change. They evolve. They're alive. They evolve alongside society. They're dynamic. So that's why we're talking about the values of uh, 4.0 surroundings, and we want to impregnate that industrial revolution surroundings that we have with values. And so what does it all mean when we talk about values, education in values, and the values education of VET 
in the Basque Country. Well, it's the second year. We're going to be moving on to our third year very shortly. And many people are involved in it to implement it. There are many, many teachers uh, doing so. They are the true people behind this project. So what's the goal of this idea of Values Education 4.0? Firstly, it's to educate, to change, educate, to transform, to change things, because we think education can change things. How? By uh, educating and training professionals who, through their work, can contribute to change things. We don't want to just train the best practitioners in the world, the best professionals in the world. We already know that the uh, Basque Country is a benchmark. We're at the cutting edge of technology and education. But not only that, these pr professionals, these practitioners need to be the best for the world, the world that we need today. So we want to connect talent, 4.0, with values, 4.0. And we want our learners to learn to see through new eyes. This is closely linked to the purpose of education. Sometimes we forget what the purpose of education is. Sometimes we're very much firefighting, focused on the day-to-day, -day, de dealing with the syllabus, that we forget what education is there for. These are just some sentences that have come from some of the great thinkers, Maria Zambrano, Pablo Freire, who said that education is a humanizing task in which each learner is a protagonist of their own life project. And we need to handhold them, we need to guide them. Nowadays, education is a hopeful thing in a world that sometimes is very desperate. We need to make education to be a dialogue with our learners so that they can learn to think critically. What's the methodology for this? What's the teaching methodology? Well, it's based on, first of all, building together. And it's based on analysis, dialogue, and inspiration. I don't know why I've left, lost, lost a few letters in my presentation. That's because I'm a human. I'm not as intelligent as I think I am. When I say analysis, I'm talking about critical and a well-thought-out analysis of reality. Dialogue. Learners need to participate, interact at all times, and this is very important. The next one, inspiration. Connect back with your emotions. We don't want to just get knowledge across and just the knowledge gets parked there. No, we want people to get to know the reality and also want to transform it. That's the difference that you want to, that you're inspired to transform. The project content is based on three main areas. The first talks about the principle of individual accountability. The second, values, four specific values. And the final one is, which is the most closely linked to the world of business, is sustainable development and social responsibility. Where's our starting point? Our starting point is this principle of individual accountability because that's what's behind everything. It's not just what ethics is based on, but the true, it's the true lever of change. I had to bring this rowing boat here this rowing boat picture, because to reach that goal, because that is our ultimate goal, it's about teamwork, it's about a shared commitment, we need an initial step, we need a pre-step. Sometimes, of course, we need to collaborate, of course we do, but before that, and that's my son, by the way, I always put a photo of him up, we first need the individual reflection, we need to know what our values are, we need to ask our questions, how am I going to get on board this boat if I don't know what I can do, what my values are? That's what I talk about when I talk about individual accountability. And the second thing is the values. We need to define those values. They're like qualities that help us, in the end, make, a, make the world a more human, condition the world, prepare the world. They're dynamic. They don't, they're not static. They change with society. But there are universal principles that we all share that mean that we can coexist, that we can, there can be a global coexistence in an increasingly global world. Another important reflection uh, from John Nesbitt, and he says that true revolution, and I believe that it's true, he says that the true revolution isn't going to come via technology, but by the reconciliation of something that really makes us human. That's the idea that we need to promote. What values do we work on? Collaboration? No, we're not. Collaboration and uh, like competition. It's true that we need to upskill people. 
that people need to compete, but we also need to work on values. And we talk about collaboration, not just as teamwork, but as support. We also talk about inclusion. We're talking about learning to be an inclusive society, initiative, not just uh, being an entrepreneur, having entrepreneurial spirit, but initiative to change the world, to be change agents. And this value of interdependence, this is something that we seem to forget these days, which is that we're all interdependent. Nobody is an island. We have a shared uh, destination in a global society. And finally, the idea of sustainable development based on accountability, responsibility, and long-term thinking. This is planet isn't ours. We're custodians. That's the main idea. And the idea of business social responsibility, corporate social responsibility, uh, is what you call it in, in business. Because VET is closely linked to corporations. Corporations, small companies, big companies are changing things. They are including environmental criteria, a responsibility in what they do. We're talking about a completely new business paradigm. Businesses are taking these values on board and they need professionals to work with them that also accept those values. This is a headline, by the way. Increasingly, our decisions as consumers, as customers, as employees, take this road. We're beginning to choose depending upon which companies we feel are responsible. There are many, many studies, reports about this that talk about the conscious consumer. We people believe that brands or companies have the ability to change things and influence society. In fact, many companies nowadays have far more power than many governments. That's why we talk about corporate responsibility. Here we've got the same study which says that there are increasingly nearly two and three people are now belief-driven buyers. So a lot's being done in companies, and we need to train practitioners that go hand in hand, that have talent, that are responsible, and that are committed. That's what companies want from us. Fewer titles, fewer qualifications, more values. A lot of that's been said today. What you're looking for are good people, good people that are good, that are different because they are good. Not just they're good at their job, but they're good people, intrinsically good. One of the symbols of this project in Values Education 4.0 is that they, these glasses, these 3D glasses. These 3D glasses have been manufactured with a Technica logo they're actually very symbolic, but they help us remember what we're doing. Because if we want to change the way we think, we need to change the way we see. We need to learn to see things differently. That's why the glasses are different. We made these modern glasses, 3D glasses, that actually from the Pleistocene area, a prehistoric virtually. But they're going to teach us to learn and to learn to think and to see things differently. We give these to our students. The idea is to have this three-dimensional way of seeing things. That is a social dimension, a values-based dimension, and of course an environmental dimension. Here you can see that. We've used some images that a little bit odd, but when you put the glasses on, you'll see how different they look. It's just a little game that we play, but it helps learners remember this idea. Some of the three content blocks are divided into two workshops each, so there are six workshops of content. And we've developed uh, original teaching material for this values education project. It's not just text, but also visual presentations to facilitate education in values for our teachers, for our students. And some of the dynamics, and there's a lot of different dynamics that we've worked on, but some of them, we've even held our own uh, uh, a summit on climate changing 
Technica. We called it COP27. This idea of working on ethics. Sometimes we think that it has nothing to do with us. And we've worked on issues such as the Maiden case, where we started asking ourselves, well, what about the clothes that we wear and the labels? Why don't we try to think about the value chain of the textile industry? Because sometimes we're talking about here human rights, impact on the environment, and many other things. And these are just some of the dynamics that we work on in our workshops. How do we do, do that? How do we do that? How do we develop it? Well, firstly, we uh, train our teachers who will then train uh, the learners. So the time has come to say congratulations and thank you to all those teachers who spend their time, effort, precisely to get this message across, to use these materials and, and teach materials because these are the first change agents. Without them, the project wouldn't work. Without the work of all the coordinators, uh, this fantastic team that's behind the coordinators, Technica, Agustin, Esther, Natalia, Osera, who are there and are driving this forward. We use experiences and dynamics in classes with our students. And we're very, very connected, very near to companies, which we invite them to come and take part to see what we're doing. Because uh, companies are changing as well. And there's also a masterclass for businesses, and I think last year it was Ulma, and this year it's going to be DHL. Those schools that have taken part so far, they're involved in this project and have been for the last two years, are the ones that you can see on the board. They're, we're getting more and more on board, they're increasing in number. Teachers are trained and through these uh, uh, in Technique. You've all visited Technique. Here we've got our teachers wearing their 3D glasses. These are our teachers, that's them receiving their training. And then afterwards, they train students or learners in the same way. And they always wear their glasses because it's a, the best way of trying to reflect the message that we're trying to get across. And I'm going to finish. I think I stuck to my time, which was I was trying to do. I'm going to start as I finished by saying that values education is really the most important tool, the most effective tool that we have to change the future, to be able to build the future that we want, that we all want. And also to say that let's make sure that the words do change uh, the world. Let's not just have that as a sentence. It needs to be our true commitment and a dream that we all share. Thank you so much.